you've been following my channel, you'll know that I came to New York City with literally no money, one month's rent, and I kind of hustled it out initially in Harlem. So, fun fact, <laughs> literally, right back here, this is exactly the place that I first came to New York City, and that's where I stayed. It was an $800 a month place, um, and now I'm here moderating a panel in literally just like the building right over here. changing so much like this actually used to be a crunch fitness I would go here because it's only ten dollars a month I would go to McDonald's I would eat then I go to work off that all that from the gym I would go to Red Rooster all the time when I was living here I remember when I first moved into this place I was a little bit skeptical because I was on the ground floor and I heard some not so great things about living on the ground floor in New York City in particular that you might be robbed or something through that like chain link fence right over here my window was literally was right there it's insane it's crazy that I used to live there in like the smallest place that you could imagine uh, and at the time like this area was not in, in any kind of way the hustle and bustle that it is now now there's a Whole Foods there's Bed Bath & Beyond there's you know Target lots of great stuff but when I was first here there wasn't anything like that man when I first moved to this city I had started the blog crowdcrux.com it was starting to get more traffic and more traction but it was in no way yet ready to supplement my entire income and I just came from hosting a panel on crowdfunding in this build, big building right here so that crowdfunding panel basically went through the ins and outs of how to run a campaign the things I've learned over the last six years since 2012 in terms of how to do that and never in my wildest dreams did I actually think that I could become a full-time blogger that I could do this thing for a living that people would be listening to me that people would want me to be a moderator of the panel I remember how my girlfriend got a cake for me cake for my birthday this is right around when like house of cards came out we were watching house of cards on my bed eating some cake and I just thought to myself, like, I don't even know if I'm gonna be able to afford to eat here. Like, I don't know if I'm gonna be able to afford to buy a sandwich and to support myself for the next couple of weeks. Like, where am I gonna get this money? So I, I, I made that cake that she got me last the entire week. Like, I ate a little bit at a time. It was like, it was the worst. Oh my God, I was so unhealthy back then. But it's kind of funny just like thinking back to that, that I had to make this cake last the entire week and that's kind of how I was feeding myself the first week that I was in New York City. I was riding subways every single day, going to the city for a free co-working event. I was working there from like really early in the morning, probably around like eight or nine, um, up until six o'clock at night. And then I was going out there to meet up groups to try and drum up some business for the web development company that I was building. And none of it was working. The only thing that had any kind of semblance of taking off was the blog that I started at the time because it was getting more traction, more readers. I was actually starting to make some good money from that blog. It was just like an incredible time in my life because I was faced with a crossroads of, am I going to be able to make it in New York City or am I gonna have to go back home and live with my parents in Massachusetts. Without a doubt, these were some of the hardest years of my life. It was depressing, it was lonely, it was difficult. Um, the times when I actually could go out to a restaurant, I remember, like go out to Red Rooster and splurge, it was, it was like a huge celebration. It was something that I rarely did. I rarely ate out. I ate egg sandwiches out of delis because it was like the cheapest thing to do. I eat a lot of ramen, a lot of macaroni. Uh, but it, it, looking back, it's almost like fond memories because it enabled me to get to the place that I am at now. In some ways, what I did back then was like a little bit foolish. I mean, to move to the city without really knowing anyone, not knowing anything about New York, not knowing about the different boroughs, that's kind of a dumb move. And uh, you're not even having like a, an income source that can fully support me. That's something that's super risky. I would never, I don't think I would do something like that today, but at the time it was kind of like a make or break moment. It's one of those, those times in life where it's like, either I'm gonna get this thing done, I'm gonna launch this business, or I'm not going to do that. And that make or break moment is what maybe enforced my decision to come to New York City, to come to Harlem, to try to grind it out and see what happens because I was just excited. I wanted something different. I could go back into old journal entries and I can see how one month I earned $800 for my blog or maybe I should be launching a product. Maybe I should write a book. Maybe I should do this. Maybe I should do that. And, and thinking about it now, it's like, you don't realize that your thoughts become your external reality. The more you think about something, the more likely you are to take action on it. The more likely you are to have that emotional ecosystem that's needed to get something off the ground. 
you know, by thinking, be very careful about your thoughts because it can impact where your life goes in the future. It's kind of funny because um, I'm looking back on my time here in Harlem and it's these very cherished and fond memories that I would never want to relive, but that looking back, it's kind of cool to, to think about them because I had to go through this to, to get to where I am. At the same time, I think to myself, okay, so I'm in Williamsburg, you know, I'm talking like I'm the shit, I'm talking all of these things like, you know, I have this business and everything, I have this, this popular blog, when am I gonna actually look back on my time in Williamsburg and be like, wow, do you remember when I thought I like had achieved something when really it was nothing? You know, looking back on Williamsburg as being a stepping stone to the next thing that I'm gonna be doing, or the next thing, and just in my entire life, hopefully continuing to look back, I think, and always be like, wow, I can't believe that I actually thought that um, I was something then. I still have that same level of fear, entrepreneurial passion, and ambition, and hope that the next couple of years of my life, the next six years, I've been in New York City since 2013, so it's been about, it's been five years. Hope the next five years of my life are as exciting as they were uh, when I first came here to Harlem.